At the start of the movie, you find Kylo the most assured of, of the choices that he's making, going deeper and deeper into the dark side. The thing that J.J. said to me when we first met was that I imagine a journey of a character where it's almost the opposite of Vader. Someone who almost starts the most vulnerable and kind of gradually becomes closer to his convictions, more assured about his choices, has metaphorically and physically killed his father. The unique and very deeply emotional and troubling way in which Han Solo meets his fate helps realize the full potential of the character that Adam Driver plays. What is it in the human brain that gives us the capacity to be as evil as human beings have been? That's what I wonder. I wonder how can those people possibly exist? Compassion and greed. We all have those two sides of us. We have to make sure that those two sides of us are in balance. What happens when you go to the dark side is it goes out of balance. At the heart of this movie is a darkness. It's part of Ray's journey to confront this darkness that's been there from the very beginning of The Force Awakens. We knew from the beginning that there would be a heart of darkness structure to the movie and that this would be about Ray's journey to the darkest place both in the galaxy and for her. But we had to work a lot to try to figure out exactly what that was, exactly what it meant, how the past would come into the story, how the present and future would interact with that past. The idea came up of, well, what if Palpatine lived on in some way? Within about 30 seconds of discussing that idea, we just knew that it was the right idea because we knew that this has always been a story of Skywalkers and Palpatines. It's a generational story, I and mean, the, the idea of the story of these grandchildren grappling with the same things that their predecessors had dealt with, it just felt poetic. My favorite scene from the prequels, Palpatine telling Anakin the story of, of Darth Plagueis the Wise and his obsession with cheating death, and it sits there like the greatest setup of all time. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. So it could be this unholy combination of trying to prolong life both through medical means and through dark magic. I love that he already looks like his action figure. <laughs> I feel I've been lucky for the third time. When George saw me for 10 minutes all those years ago for Return of the Jedi, I was suddenly the Emperor of the Universe. So then to get this call, it was once again a, a, a third time extraordinary experience. This is fantastic. This is so good. Is it still insane? It's insane. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it's actually getting more insane moment to moment. <laughs> Welcome, young Skywalker. I have been expecting you. It's like he has this instrument that can go from, you know, a whisper to this, you know, mega roar. It sounds like he's got a tiger purring in his throat, and that makes the hair stand up in the back of your neck. This is the full Emperor now, bursting forth, as he always was. And it's clear that although I have the best makeup artist in the business, he doesn't. I hadn't seen him in his garb till on the day, and it was awesome. The way it's described in the script is so creepy and so weird and unsettling. I just want to see Ian be the Emperor again. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Look what you have made.